Maria Villa Escajeda, who is laid to rest today. She was 102 years old. Historians say she was instrumental during the settlement of the Chamisal land dispute in 1964. ABC7's Brianna Perez shows you the impact she had on the borderland and its people. Elvira Villa Escajeda, also known as the woman who gave voice to the barrio. They were given a seat at the table, a seat at the negotiation table with federal and local authorities because of Elvira and her vision and her activism fighting for her, her community and her home. During an international dispute, she was right there with diplomats demanding fair treatment for residents tangled in an international dispute. The fight was over 630 acres of land torn between the U.S. and Mexico. According to the National Park Service, in the 1850s, erosion and severe flooding shifted the course of the Rio Grande, which created uncertainty about who owned the land along the banks. The Rio went south of a piece of land owned by Mexico, known as El Chamizal. The neighborhood would continue to grow for a hundred years until the U.S. gave the land back to Mexico in a peaceful settlement. We're taking the final step in bringing to a close a problem which has been a thorn in the side of our relations with Mexico for almost a century. The way in which the thorn has been removed is a real tribute to the goodwill between the people and the leaders of our two countries. The victory also meant nearly 5,600 residents of the El Paso neighborhoods were forced to move. During this time, Villa, who owned three properties in the area herself, would create the Chamisal Civic Association sending letters to President John F. Kennedy, among others, outlining their position. According to Alana de Hinojosa, a public historian in Chicano and Central American Studies at UCLA. And then when she heard rumors that the residents were going to be offered tax value for their homes, that's when she said enough is enough. And she went to the El Paso uh, del Norte Hotel and went and found some of the, you know, diplomats and negotiators and said, I need to speak with you. And the story is history, that from then on, they had a seat at the table. A report to the federal government by a UTEP professor said that it was the first time Congress allocated funds for moving and relocating families displaced by government projects. President Lyndon B. Johnson awarded her with a silver medal inscribed with her name to thank her for helping the government settle the Chamisal dispute more justly. Researchers say there were still social and cultural consequences when the neighborhoods were uprooted. Today, it's a Chamisal National Memorial Cultural Center, and its walls are filled with history. If we take a couple of steps this way, we see this mural that represents the unity of different cultures and commemorates the peaceful settlement between the U.S. and Mexico. Monday, El Paso County Commissioners adopted a resolution and presented it to her niece, honoring Villa's life and work. Unfortunately, we have to honor her in her absence, but I'm still happy to be able to, to do this. Definitely someone who should be um, written about in the history books and spoken about uh, to show how this woman, um, you know, was able to take a stand against um, government officials who weren't giving her the opportunity to speak, but she took that opportunity. Hinojosa is writing about Villa and hoping new generations will learn of her legacy. Villa was a truly remarkable woman with an extraordinary life. Brianna Perez, ABC7. The storm track weather now here.